One minute. Mr Hannan. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. What really grates here is not the dishonesty of our MPs, but the credit that they're giving to our intelligence. They could have just rejected Brexit. They could have just refused to implement Article 50. But instead, they have again and again lied and concealed their true motives. They thought that if they could string things out beyond last week, that people would blame Boris rather than the people doing the stringing out. They think that if they keep calling for an election but voting against, we somehow won't notice. They think that if they amend a bill to death with the intention of stopping it, again, we're going to fall for it. They seem to have believed their own propaganda about all Leave voters being stupid. And every time, they have miscalculated. The reality is the Conservative Party, in every poll now, has been ahead for the last 40 opinion polls, generally in double digits. The only options we have are either to take this deal now and become... Uh, good neighbours rather than grudging tenants, or there will be a, an outright victory for the Conservatives at the next election and tougher terms. Those are the only two options now left. Mr Hannan, uh, Mr Smith has requested a question. He will accept. Mr yeah. Smith, go ahead. Thank you, and uh, I am grateful to Mr Hannan for giving way, and I very warmly endorse his criticism of dishonest politicians. Uh, in exactly that vein, would he like to apologise for his uh, oft-repeated quote that nobody is talking about leaving the single market, which he said repeatedly during the Leave campaign, and indeed his subsequent conversion that uh, EU citizens' rights are not going to be the same. Would he like to apologise for his previous positions and set the record straight? <laughs> It's simply not the case that I repeatedly said that during the election campaign. Oh. You're looking at a quote from a 2015 interview before the campaign began in which I made very clear, and I've stuck to that position all the way through, that I thought the best outcome for us would be a Swiss-type outcome. And that's a position that I took before, during and since the campaign. I have not changed my position. I wonder whether you, who have made your entire career about demanding a referendum on independence for one part of the UK, might consider the hypocrisy of refusing to accept the verdict when the UK as a whole votes for independence. Colleagues, um, I will move to the next speaker. I know there is further requests for blue card questions. I'm taking one and I may indeed um, in a few speakers down the list have to close blue card because of the pressure on